it's one thing to be tough. It's another thing. Who's the smarter guy? And that was Gaethje. And I'm not taking nothing. I, I love Ferguson. How can you not love? I, I spent the whole beginning of this broadcast talking about men like him. So, of course, I love him. But I love Gaethje, too. That he's ready to he's ready to to die. And he said that after the fight. He said, I went in here ready to die. I, I, and, and you know what? I don't usually believe guys when they say it. I believe these guys when they say it. That for that moment, for that moment, they get themselves there. I believe them. I believe them. How else could you perform that way? How else can you leave everything outside the door that you have to leave outside the door? Think about what I'm saying. You got to leave stuff outside the door, human stuff, to go in there ready to deal with what these guys deal with. You got to leave it outside the door. If you think about living, you, you won't be able to do it. I know that sound, people. <laughs> Teddy, yeah, I'm going to tell you a story. Obviously, it's not as severe, but it gets to the point. Customato, the greatest for me, the, my mentor, psychologically, everything, technically, the, dedicated his whole life to the sport. We just did a podcast on him uh, last week. So if people haven't seen it, if you feel like it, you can see it. And he, special man, understood this realm, this realm, and how it attached to this, to this realm. This is the general, this is just the, the troops. And he told me he was getting ready to go in the army. You know, he, he had been... Uh, Drafted, I guess, and he was getting ready to go in the army. So you know what his first thing that he did? He didn't write a letter. He didn't say goodbye to people. He didn't start doing all that. You know, that could be your first thing, or you could start packing. But the first thing he did, he started sleeping on the floor. He stopped sleeping on a bed. Why? Because he said he had to stop being comfortable with the things that make us comfortable that do not allow us to be ready to do certain things like die. He said in his mind, I'm going in the army, especially back in those days, I'm going in, there's only one thing I got to be prepared to do, die. He said, you know, I don't want to, he didn't want to die, he wasn't going to go run out into the field and say, shoot me, but he, in his mind, he was talking to his young trainer who he wanted to be a good trainer. And he said, Teddy, I that that's how I prepared for it. So it's hard to die if you're living comfortably because you don't want to lose those things. You're human. So I got rid of them one by one. I started getting rid of all the things that made it comfortable to live that made me want to live, like a comfortable mattress. And I slept on the floor to condition myself. And I believe these guys do the same thing. I believe to get ready to go in that ring, they have to be ready in their mind, just like Cus was getting ready for the army, to die. Do they want to die? Of course not. But they have to have that mentality to perform at the level that we watch. And then I spent 20 minutes at the beginning of this podcast trying to give them the, not just the respect, for, for people to appreciate what they truly do and how they do it. They have to prepare themselves and they have to give up comforts of things and thinking of things that would not allow them to be prepared to die. Having said that, it's still about controlling all your assets, your mind, your, your feelings, to be cold. See, if you're willing to die, you can be cold. If you're not willing to die, you're very emotional. Everything impacts you. Everything flirts with you. 
Everything moves you. Everything confuses you. Influences you. In ways that you can't afford to be influenced. So you got to be cold. Disciplined. Some people call it patient. I saw Gaethje patient. It wasn't an accident. I saw him cold. I saw him patient. I saw him controlled. I saw him understand something the other guy didn't understand. He understood how to behave like a fighter, no doubt. He always has Ferguson. What a tough son of a B. Again. But he didn't understand how to use his physical assets the best. He only depended on his toughness. Like I call the fights, I bring this out in the ESPN. This guy, Gaethje, didn't depend only on his toughness. Which is what he had a reputation That's for doing right. coming into the fight. He depended on, uh, he used other things. He drew from other things that were there to draw from. Like I said about Salvador Sanchez, when he beat my favorite fighter at the time, the featherweight champ, Danny Indian Red, Little Red Lopez. They called him both. But uh, because Sanchez didn't rely only on his toughness. And Little Red, he relied mostly on his toughness. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not enough when the other guy's tough and using these other resources, these other abilities, these other assets. So I saw, like I see I, when I call fights, I saw Gaethje where he understood that Ferguson would give up his height. See, it's one thing I used to always say on ESPN corner fights. This guy's taller. This guy's longer. Everyone loves to put those stats out there, Ken. What do they mean? They mean crap. They mean squat if you don't know how to use them. Oh, this guy's got a reach that's 102 inches. Whoa. That means he could stand across the street and hit you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's got 100 and he's, and he's seven inches taller. But do they ever bother to tell you if he knows how to use them, how to fight tall, what the freak good is it if you don't know how to freaking use it? And yeah. Ferguson just depends on his toughness. That's enough. He depends, and it's always worked for him, breaking a guy down with pressure. I've always said on ESPN, pressure breaks pipes. It breaks people. Sometimes. Sometimes. But that's what he depends on. He was all in. All his eggs in that one basket. That's what he was going to be. He was tall. He was longer. But he don't know how to fight tall. And he doesn't pay attention to that. He's just going to break you freaking down. And the other guy at this point in his career, and you brought up a good point, he was always known just for being tough. He's gotten wiser. He's gotten smarter. He's gotten to that place in life more desperate, whatever, more urgent, whatever you want to call it. But he got there. It's not enough just to be tough. I got to be the other things. So he went into this fight understanding. This guy's going to, is tall and all, means crap <coughs> because he's going to give up his height. He's going to come to me. That's predictability. I can take advantage of that predictability. I can count on that. When he comes in, I ain't going to him. I'm going to set. I'm going to be ready, and when he comes in, I'm going to time him. I'm going to counter the crap out of him. Yeah, he's a tough son of a gun. Yeah, he's a rock, but I'm going to keep hitting that rock all night until it starts to splinter, until it starts to flake. It's still, it starts to break off, and that's what he did. He was patient. He was together. He was smart. He was prepared. He was the best he could be. Because he wasn't just tough. He was everything. And what he did was, again, he let this Ferguson who always comes at you like a bull, seeing red. And he came at him. And he didn't, he didn't go and throw the first lead. He drew the counter. When the guy reached in, bang! When the guy come up, bang! He timed him. He timed him and he timed him all night, and he needs he he deserves credit for that. 
He deserves mm-hmm. credit for that. Yeah, the other guy's still just as tough. Still, but he's the loser. Because he was only dependent only on that. And that's the parallels in life. That's the parallels in boxing and MMA, UFC. That's the parallels. It always comes down to that. When it doesn't, it's just because the guy didn't use it. But it still was there. And that's what I saw in that fight. 